Hello everyone, welcome back. It's time for another Kaguya-sama reaction. This time we'll be doing Season 3, Episode 8. Whew, we've been getting quite a bit of build-up stuff happening lately, um, especially towards the Culture Festival. Last episode sort of focused on that. We had like a planning Culture Festival committee, I think it was, where Ishigami and Ino have both joined. At first reluctantly, but Ishigami didn't need that much of a push from Shinomiya. After hearing that Tsubame is heading that committee, we got to see Ishigami's rivalry with the other boys who are also interested in Tsubame. We also got to see Ino has a particular interest in, well, I think the atmos atmosphere of a campfire setting. For someone as strict as her, it's interesting to see, you know, these sort of parts sort of like deep within her where she has this feeling of, um, I guess, you know, actual, literal, and figurative warmth from being able to gather around a campfire with friends and people you care for and stuff like that. So it was interesting seeing that sort of revealed and how the desire to have it also pushed her to expand a bit and potentially make more friends within within this committee in, in the way that she's working so hard for something that obviously the rest of them are also interested in but didn't think uh, was feasible. So let's hope that goes off, you know, quite well. There are a few other things as well. Shinomiya, Shinomiya's archery. The archery is something that we've always known that she's been, you know, quite proficient with and is one of the clubs that she takes part in uh, in school, but has just sort of sat in the background for a little while until recently, where apparently she'll be choosing between attending a competition where I guess because of her skill, she'd probably have a pretty good chance. She's reluctant because it could take away from the chance to spend time with Miyuki. There's another thing that they're possibly setting up. And there was a bunch more, you know, interview stuff with various people just to really give us the feel that, yes, you know, this culture festival is a thing that's, you know, coming up. But we finished the episode with a nice section which was... It's funny, they can play with the Shuragane um, Fujiwara interaction of her training him out of his... Um, incompetence in various fields and this time they don't even need to do the training arc because they can just sort of play with the fact that we know that this is a thing we know that it traumatizes her and we also know that she can't help herself she knows on the one hand it's so painful but she also can't avoid helping someone who is trying so hard um, and so just having that occasionally is just kind of funny as well but mixed into that, we ended up getting to see Shuragane and um, Shinomiya spend a little bit of time, you know, by themselves in the council room, and had a fairly sort of gentle uh, interaction between them, as uh, as Shinomiya, in a sort of roundabout way, just praised him. You know, uh, she just commented on that's why you know that he works so hard and that it's always worth um, trying things, which you know. Maybe he should try reading into that a bit more <laughs> and try a bit harder in some other aspect. But anyway, that's what they've been setting up. So, so let's get into episode 8. Okay, looks like this one goes straight into the opening. As usual, this is a reminder that this is a full-length timer-based reaction, so you'll need to get your own copy to sync up and watch along with me. To help you do that, I'll be showing little bits of the episode and only little bits of sound just to help you keep yourself in sync. And also just so I can show little bits that I think are either funny or um, interesting in the show. I'll be giving a countdown now. Three, two, one, go. The show really feels like they're not going to be moving. Like, you know, this type of show, it's not designed for the characters to actually make progress, or at least not in a short time. 
And yet I don't feel like it's, um, you know, just treading water. Like, even though it feels like maybe the net movement is exactly the same, you know, it's like, okay, well, they're still just in the council and neither of them have confessed. And it's still, it still feels like there's been so much movement underneath just this development in their own relationship with each other and, you know, throughout the whole student council, so. But every time it always feels like both Shirogane and Shinomiya are getting that much closer. Tomorrow, so very soon. Either this episode or next. Mm, takoyaki. Find <laughs> no surprises, please. Come on, his uniform. Oh dear. <laughs> so shamelessly dressed like an 8th grader. Oh my god. The English phrase that got spat out by a translation website. Awesome. <laughs> Those shirts with the built-in long sleeves. Dragon style. His school it wasn't actually an eighth grader when he bought them. Of course. His uniform is probably the safest thing he could wear. No one's allowed to wear their waist pack anywhere but on their shoulder. <laughs> Old guy trying to look cool. My uncle was a big fan of the the fanny pack, or the bum bag, or the waist bag, I guess. Best way to not want something is to drop interest at, from the get-go. Oh man. I 
I sort of keep forgetting what a what a thoughtful big brothery he is. A man who's given up on a lot of things. This watch is for someone who'll try to reach the moon. Wow. Who else is going to just randomly drop cash in her wallet, hey? Mm, Takayaki. That looks nice and simple. So carefully casual. Ah, uh, she's blushing. <laughs> Annoying, but she's still. She's still his sister. About Kaguya Shinomiya Part 2. Ah, oh, that's the... right. The story certainly has its share of holes. If you give someone a heart-shaped... okay. You've got a... That's very brave.
Well, one of you needs to do something. So sneaky. So much. From being such a realist to massively overthinking. Look at those bags under his eyes. He's also he's always so like unconsciously thoughtful. <laughs> Once again, giving Hayasaka the impossible request. That's a big step. Such nauseating words. That's a big step. Well, wow, Yasaka, this was the biggest news of the year. It's huge. It's taken two seasons and eight episodes for her to admit it just to herself, never mind confessing. Mm hmm The 
depends on why you won't confess. Exactly. <laughs> she just rejected the principal theme of this story. <sighs> that is a terrifying thing to worry about still, though. I'd like to know that too. Just have it. Brother? Not dating. Wow. So quick. And like with barely any thought. Just texting each other online and it just happened. More carnivorous with men than I thought. She's got stats. Oh, that might be showing... Hmm. That might actually be a... A weight off his mind. God, could you imagine holding your phone in your mouth like that? Well, at least he's... Hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. Scary. <laughs> Let's go.
That's a start. Now you just need to get that boost for yourself. A lot of things going on. Oh, they're both set up. They're both the closest they've mentally been. Next episode! Hmm. That ending always makes me smile. Wow, what an episode that was. <clears throat> it felt like a long one, um, in a good way, that is. Just because I thought, I think around like the 16 minute mark, thereabouts, just after Shinomiya had managed to admit to herself, well, and to Hayasaka, that she, you know, straight up, yes, she likes Shirogane. That soon after that it was going to finish the episode, and then it kept going, and there was just more stuff. I was already bracing myself for, oh, damn it, they're cutting it here. Um, but yeah. Again, an episode which was, as I suggested at the start, of this reaction that they were going to be building up towards the culture festival. But first we started with getting to spend time with the Shiragane family, and that was a... I really liked that part, just seeing this sort of insight into their relationship. We see that Miyuki is a good big brother. He, even if he does sort of the annoying things that a big brother might do, but he cares for his sister, and while it might get on her nerves, and you know, that's kind of part of the deal, that's um, contractually how you have to interact as a older brother and a younger sister. But she, I think, you know, deep underneath that level of <laughs> teenage, teenage girl, younger sister, actually does recognize um, what he does for her, and, you know, that she sort of does care for him, even if on the surface she does have to you know, insult him, <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, a reminder that he does give, you know, that he would sneak money to her, like, for her birthday. For her birthday? I think, like, for Christmas and stuff. You know, they weren't really into gifts, but he would always try to give her a bit because he cares for her and hopes that she can do well. And we see that it's sort of passed down. I'm going to make sure someone's not like breaking into my house. I'll be right back. Okay, thankfully no one is <laughs> breaking into my house. I just left a window open and it made a door slam. Um, anyway, now I've lost track of where I was. We see that their father also really wants the best for his kids, just like this whole thing. Um, you know, he's, he's a man who you could imagine could be depressed and maybe, you know, is like underneath it all because his wife left him and his story about his company got shut down and he's had to sell like a bunch of stuff but they make do and he tries to provide for them still and the fact that he was going to hand that watch over to his son which he said he'd bought and wanted to pass on to someone who could you know who is he is hoping will do great things because i guess 
he, as in the father, feels like he's failed, I guess. That he had high aspirations and everything sort of fallen away, but he's trying to do his best to make sure that his kids can still meet their goals. That they can still aim high and achieve high. <clears throat> and so we discover that Muki has been similarly frugal with his own spending because he really wants to make sure that his younger sister can also get a chance to buy clothes and be fashionable because he, I guess he knows how important that could be to a, you know, to a young girl as well. Muki's just sort of accepted that, well, this is how I am, it's fine, I don't need, you know, good clothes, <laughs> I'll just wear my school uniform everywhere, that's enough for me. But my sister deserves you know, to enjoy things, and so he tries to make that happen for her. <clears throat> it was just a really sweet ending, just seeing her blushing, <laughs> because inwardly Kay is obviously proud. Proud of her brother, and, and, you know, secretly pleased that her friends are, that her friends are impressed with her being, being related to her brother. So again, like I said at the start, these, these episodes always do a good job of still pushing forward the other character relationships. But beyond that, the rest of the episode was really building tension. As we prepare for the festival, but also we've got these various people considering their, their need to confess to the ones that they are interested in. Both, both Kaguya and Muki have reached a point where they've admitted their feelings, the sense of time is really getting to them, and, you know, Shinomiya has admitted to herself that she likes him, and is trying to work through this whole complicated thing in her head about, well, you know, I think I know he likes me, and so why is it so difficult to say it? But at least she's gotten to a point where she wants to do it. The importance of making the other one confess first is sort of lessening, in the in the face of the danger that they might just miss out altogether. Shirogane is resolved to confess if she weren't very conscious of the fact that he's going, you know, after he graduates here, he's going to be leaving the country, so... But then we've also got sort of these side um, relationships to compare with. We've got Ishigami, who also has this feeling of um, time, because he knows that his senpai is going to be graduating, and that's also a it's also a limit on how much time they can spend, you know, as a couple while sort of in the same space. You know, it's not impossible to have a relationship where she's already moved on and he's still here, but it certainly does put a bit more of a strain on that sort of thing. Super nice to see Shinomiya still, you know, being very encouraging, but also seeing, I guess, in him, this, um, you know, a reflection of the, the conflicts that she herself is having, which is why I guess she wants him to succeed. It, it matters so much to her, both for his sake, but I guess she wants to, she, she wants to see this sort of success, and she managed to successfully bolster his confidence, which is great. Um, oh, and uh, and Osaragi as well, just a complete juxtaposition there, where she and the previous leader of the cheer squad just started dating, just, just like that. They were just working together because of the festival, and then they were texting, and then suddenly it was just kind of, hey, why not? And it's not going to be that easy for everyone, but I think this shows that it can be but I think it shows that it doesn't have to be as hard as these people are making it on themselves right now. So yeah, content content of the story is all just building up, and I really can't wait for the next one. But the music also did a good job as well, just this feeling of, yep, we're heading to something. And I don't know whether it's going to resolve in next episode or take a couple of episodes, but... This is the next big, this looks like the next big arc. Man, I love this show. <laughs> um, anyway, that's it. So I can't wait for episode 9. 
But until then, please leave a comment about what you thought about the episode or this reaction. If you liked it, then give a thumbs up. If you didn't, then give a thumbs down. Regardless, please take care, and I'll see you next time. Mm-mm-mm-mm. <laughs>